Spencer, let's kick it off with you. How excited were you to be able to work on a Christmas project of all things with your dad? Well, I, I haven't done any other Christmas movies, so it was my first experience in the Christmas world, but also <laughs> it was incredibly like exciting to be able to, it, it made it sort of monumental, momentous, you know, special for me to actually do a movie with my father. I've always wanted to work with him. You know, he's really been an incredible influence on the kind of work that I do and my comic comedic timing, if I even have any of that left, I don't know right now. Um, it was something I always wanted to do and it actually was lovely. We had a wonderful time working together. You know, I would do it again and again and again. I gotta ask you, you gotta give me the tea because I feel like if you're on the set with the Kelsey Grammer and it's like <laughs> his daughter, Spencer Grammer, I imagine mm -hmm. that he's like, listen, kid, yeah, you're my daughter at home, but in these streets, on the set, this is how you're gonna behave. Was it different having dad as executive producer versus, you know, boss and dad, all that jazz? My experience working with him was very uh, easy. I, I didn't necessarily feel like he pulled a boss move on me, if that makes sense. Um, it, I, I feel like that's sort of how a set really works. It does work from the top down. So if you have people who, who you work with who are your bosses per se, they will sort of set the tone for a show. And I really think, uh, we were in great hands because my dad's a lovely man to work with. Oh, thanks. <laughs> if you could give Spencer um, a grade report card, a grade on that report card, what would it be for how she was on the set? Oh, she was absolutely lovely. She's a pro. She's, she's, uh, she hits the ground running. She's prepared. She shows up. She's also smart, which is, is one of the greatest things about actors that I've noticed in general is the good ones are smart people. They don't always have you know, the right idea sometimes. They might be a little off base, but they're smart enough to understand what the human experience is and they bring that to the work. And if mm -hmm. they've got any at all, you get it done quickly because they know how to access it. I mean, it, it, that's, that's, it's a good actor. She's uh, she's She's got the stuff. And uh, I mean, granted, it, I will say without sort of seeming too ridiculously uh, self-effacing, uh, <laughs> I'm good at what I do and I actually, <laughs> I do cultivate a, a nice experience around working with me. I mean, people who have worked with me know that working with me is easy to do. Uh, you don't have to be a jerk or anything else. You just show up and uh, I'm, I'm delightful. <laughs> <laughs> I love how you put that. I actually, I got <laughs> it's, I mean, it's, it just, you'll always have a chance. I mean, I said this to somebody, a young writer years ago, and, uh, and uh, I'm not sure she ever listened to me because we haven't heard from her since, but. <laughs> I mean, for want of a better word, I said to her, I said, listen, you're always going to have a chance to be an blank hole. And uh, I said, you needn't go there this early in your career. But she sort of did. And we haven't really heard from her since. So See? it's okay. She should have listened to the longevity. She should work. have listened, but okay. <laughs> you know, it's like you can't beat people over the head. I was actually talking to um, Jake Huffman this morning, the son of Dustin Huffman. Uh -huh. And, and I, you know, what I really enjoyed was when he was talking about the tips, he was a little nervous to give his father tips. They were playing a, dog, um, a father and son. And, sure. he saying, hey. <laughs> and he was like, you know, hey, dad, I, and then he kind of backed off of it. And he said his dad was like, no, 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 I want to hear it. I want to hear it. So was <laughs> that the same for you two? How, how was that dichotomy, giving each other advice and tips on set? But Spence was great. She, did the great. she was terrific. There was nothing to really say. I mean, there was a couple of times uh, during a scene, I, I would say to the director, I'd say, I think we should, you know, try this or try that. And Spence did the same thing. She felt comfortable enough to do that. Uh, yeah. If, if we were in a situation where Spencer was directing, and this may actually happen because I'm in a position where I can hire people like directors, I would defer to her. <laughs> that's that's well, not- You would right. defer to me? Well, I mean, I'm, I would be guiding you into a performance of a lifetime, you know? There you go, see, I like that. <laughs> <laughs> Spencer, were there those times where you were saying, Dad, I think this is how I see this going, or, you know, were there times where you kind of took reins? What's interesting is, you know, I think I think the thing is, just because we're we are father and daughter in real life doesn't mean that our relationship in real life is going to be the same as what's portrayed in a film, right? So we so these are two separate characters and I take with me my little bag of dad issues and experiences. It was a little bit easier because I didn't have to like make them up. You know, I didn't have to build that character from scratch. I had some of those experiences already to bring to the table. 
but I would say I had ideas. There were there were things in this character that could have gone in a direction that I think would have made her a little bit more unlikable. And I think it was important that Michelle realized as, as being a parent, as like, actually I have it, it's very true for me, was that, you know, being a parent is hard. Balancing a career and a life and your own individual needs and the needs of your child at the same time is very difficult. And at some point, the 12 days of Christmas Eve of experiencing this day over and over again is really for his character to make amends for himself. And I think for me, many of the times that this happened, it wasn't like, oh, he's trying to make an effort. It's like, this is who he is. I've already forgiven him, right? So I've already moved past this moment of how dare you not have been there for me as a child and all this. It was more like, well, you weren't there and that's okay, you know, cause I've accepted it and I love you anyway. But it was for for him to really figure out what the meaning of Christmas was for him. And so I, I, I came with that approach as opposed to being like, how dare you never be the dad I wanted, you know, <laughs> which I think would have made it not as fun. And I had talked about that with our director, Dustin Reichardt, who's who is actually a blast to work with as well. So professional. So, so yeah, so easy. I knew what he was doing and it, it lent itself really easy to uh, for us to work with. And then obviously Kelsey and I are clearly consummate professionals. We know our lines, we show up on set, we hit our marks, and then we just played. Then we just played, really, you know? I remember we had one, well, I, am I allowed to say, there's one time where you're like, you have a heart attack. Right, yeah. You know? And uh, many, many years ago, that was something that actually did happen in real life. No, yeah, you know, it's a normal Wednesday. <laughs> Daughter and father pretending you, you know? And so it was, there was those things that were interesting, like, hey, looking at your your dad and going through that, it's as an actor, you put yourself in situations other people only maybe live once. You, you live like the hardest or the most exciting things in your life over and over and over again. And honestly, it's it's a luxury because you don't get to do that in real life. So for us to be able to go through those things together and have it just be make believe was kind of really special. Elsie, you get. <laughs> You get 12 chances to redo redo your day and repair relationships, right? So if you were both given a redo, mm -hmm. <laughs> what would it be for? <laughs> well, you know what, honestly, I really have no regrets. I wish I hadn't hurt people, but I know I did, but I know I, I, know I didn't mean to. And so it's kind of very little you can do to turn back that page. Um, it was not my goal to, to cause any pain by trying to like stumble through my life and get to the best me I could find. I've done that and there's still work to do. And uh, that's what I'm most excited about is that there's still work to do. But, uh, but there was never anything, I don't have to look back and say, boy, you really were a, a blank SOB there. Um, <laughs> I, I made mistakes, but you know what? I never deliberately tried to hurt anybody and that's, that's the way I meant to do it. I, I feel similarly. I mean, I, I feel like everything leads us in a certain path. Every fork in the road leads us into a new direction. And I try to stay as optimistically as I can. Um, I've had some, I've had some tragic experiences that have changed my life in such a way that I'll never be the same. And uh, I can't say that I would do it any differently because I think who we are in essence is who we will always be. We, we can't like hide away from it. We can't change our, our choices because we made them already, but we can, you know, I, I like to say fail forward. <laughs> yeah. um, like I think every everything in life we might consider a failure only leads us to more success in some way. So you just have to be constantly creative and committed to reinventing your life over and over again.